We're back then with another beginner's guide for Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 and tonight we'll look at the God of Mischief Loki. He is a character that without giving too much away like the, the previous beginner's guide we covered for Falcon, he's a character that hasn't ever really clicked with me. I've got a feeling that may upset some people because he is a bit of a fan favourite but I really have struggled with him. But in this video, to let you know why I've struggled with him, what we'll do is we'll start off, we'll talk about his overview and his stats, we'll have a, a quick look at his abilities and we'll talk about general rotation you can use, we'll have a look at the team bonuses that are available, we'll talk about the synergy attacks that are available, you actually get quite a few cell synergies, we'll look at the build that I'm running on him, we'll check out his free alternative costumes and then we'll finish up with a quick summary. So we'll start off here with the general overview. Loki then is a hybrid character, but he actually throws in some clones as well, and I do really like that aspect of him and what they have tried to do with that, but I think the limitations of the actual game hold back what you could do in regards to his clones. Now, when we look at the abilities, three of them, I have the Ethereal tag, a tag you don't see on many characters at all. You've also got the, the Freeze tag on two of the abilities, and that's something that I actually focus on, because I like to play that side of him, the frost giant side of him, and we'll talk about that when we get to the actual build section. He also has an energy attack ability, and this is the one that's used to proc all your synergies, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. His hero traits, he's got quite a few here, he's got flight, he's got cold resistance, and he can add fire, ice, or shock to his staff, but if you add fire or shock, you're doing it wrong as much as shock may be the, the better element, nice one, just fits him perfectly, and that is the one that I do use. In regards to his staff, a bit of a mishmash here, but all over the place. Strength is a C, but that will only really be relevant to his, his light attack, which is a melee attack, I should mention, and his heavy attack is ethereal. His vitality is a D, the mastery is a B, so that's good because his attacks are ethereal or energy, so it affects them. And then you've got his resilience, which is way up at an A, so he's very resilient to magic attacks, which makes sense from a lore perspective. Durability is a D, and then finally his energy is a B. So that's the quick overview, let's have a more in-depth look now at his abilities. The first ability we have here is Dark Magic, and this attack actually has a few interesting elements. Now, you throw out three magic balls with this, and they'll hit various targets. If you use it against a single target, and this is generally when I would use it, you actually have all three balls hit the target, so you're doing three times the damage. So, if you're up against a boss, you've taken out the trash, or stunned or staggered, fire this off, and you can actually do really pretty decent damage on it. Alongside that, if you cast Mystic Vortex, a skill we'll look at in a moment, you can actually get a cell synergy, so you cast a tornado first, and then you follow up with Dark Magic, and that will give you a synergy attack as well there. So, quite a lot going on with this particular ability. For this next ability here, you may notice something quite odd, and that I've got the text for Deep Freeze down the bottom left, but I'm currently showing off Frost Illusion. The reason for that is that the developers have actually got the description of the skills the wrong way around. So the description we're looking at right now should apply to the Deep Freeze ability, but it actually doesn't. So to read out anyway, so the skill we're showing off is the Deep Freeze skill. What this does is it creates two mirror images that cast freezing spells. So this one here, what I'll generally do is I'll use Mystic Vortex first, a follow up with Deep Freeze, you'll be freezing enemies and also you can get a synergy where you get a nice whirlwind as well. Now this is decent to freeze enemies, but ever since Iceman came out, it does feel a little bit lacklustre. The next ability we have then is Frost Illusion, and the actual gameplay you see is the Frost Illusion ability, but you can see him on Deep Freeze because again the tooltip's been the wrong way around, so with this you release Frigid Air upon enemies in front of the character, and with this one here, the same as actually Deep Freeze, it adds the ice element to ally attacks as well, so that can be useful, and again it's a cell synergy attack, so you'll fire out Mystic Vortex, and then you can follow up this one to do damage as well. I've genuinely found the best way to do damage though would be by generating your tornado for the synergy attack rather than using the ability on its own. And we're back to normal for this final ability, no problems with the tool tips. So this is Mystic Vortex where Loki waves his staff creating a tornado in the area for a short amount of time and as mentioned you can get a nice tornado from both Deep Freeze and Frost Illusion or else you can get a synergy attack where the tornado will actually explode just doing a set amount of damage 
from dark magic. So there's quite a lot of options there. In regards to the abilities I use, I always start off with Mystic Vortex. I'll genuinely follow up with Deep Freeze or Frost Illusion to try and freeze an enemy. And then from there, if it's a single target boss, then I'll use dark magic on them. But that's all the abilities, so let's check out the team bonuses. Team bonus wise then Loki is part of four different teams, it's villains, gods and demons, family values and also Marvel royalty and the highest overlap you'll get between the teams, uh, it's three different teams and it goes to Thanos and Thor so that's actually two pretty good characters thematically, of course Loki and Thor but I like to play with Thanos sometimes as well and I'll drop in Magneto and Venom, I like to run a, a villain style team as well so that can be pretty fun there. But that's the, the top team bonuses, let's now have a look at the synergy attacks. When it comes to synergy attacks, we've already discussed the fact that it does have three cell synergies, they all come via the whirlwind, but he's also got the synergy traits, meaning he can synergize with other characters as well. Now the synergy traits are freeze, whirlwind and burst. Probably the most useful one I would say would be ricochet, when that comes via the whirlwind ability, but bear in mind again that he can proc this himself. You've then got your top five team synergies. Now this is a total number of synergies. It's not necessarily the most effective ones. So do just bear that in mind there. But the top team, it's Hulk, Luke Cage and Star-Lord. That's at 68 total synergies. I'm surprised we don't have Crystal for a change. Normally she's always in there. We've then got Luke Cage, Star-Lord and Wolverine at 67. Hulk, Star-Lord and Wolverine at 67 once more. And then there we go. There's actually Crystal appearing now. We've got Crystal, Hulk and Wolverine at 66. And then Crystal. Crystal, Luke Cage and Wolverine is 66 as well. So again, as mentioned, that's the highest number of total synergies you can get, not necessarily the most effective synergies. Now, let's have a look at the build I'm running on them. Build wise then for Loki, I go for something a bit different than what I would normally go for. Now generally with a lot of characters you'll, you'll try and min max and get the most out of them. Now Loki is a character that I just don't feel he is that effective, especially in comparison to a lot of the more recent heroes that came out. So for that reason when I play him I like to run a more thematic build instead. So this is a Frost Giant build. Now with this you would want to have the eyes so that permanently adds the ice ability attribute effect to the user. Only affects his light attack, but it gives his staff an awesome frost glow, and that's honestly the main reason I do use this. And I'll get hate in the comments below for suggesting this, but that's what I enjoy. If you're going to use this, and it works alongside the frost attacks he has, you would go for decrease attacks before status effects by 34%, so you get more chance to actually freeze enemies. In regards to the damage, because of all the different tags he's got, he's got the ethereal, he's got the energy, he's got the melee, what you want to go for damage wise is increase damage by 16.5% and then increase crit chance by 8%. So that's the build I'm going for. Let me know if you've actually got one that's good from a min max in perspective, but this one I definitely have fun with from a thematic perspective. Now let's check out his alternative costumes. For the alternative costumes then we have three in total, the first one we look at is the recolouring of his base costume and I would say this is probably my favourite costume for him, so in order to unlock this you need to free start all the nodes within the Sigma Infinity Rift, so it is a little bit on the tricky side to actually do but I would say it's definitely worthwhile for this costume. We then have the Kid Loki costume, this particular one is unlocked via the, the Shield Depot so it's 400 points. Now, this particular one, I like that idea of it, but something just didn't sit right with me with how it looked. And I remember when I actually done my video for this costume, someone pointed out the fact that the reason it looks odd is that it's Kid Loki, but the proportions for the size of his character are exactly the same. So you've basically got the kid's costume on an adult, and that's why personally I think it does look a little bit odd, this one. So really not a fan of this. This is the alternative recolouring of the Kid Loki costume, there's not enough change in this for me to really change my opinion on it at all, it's just really the base colours seem to have moved around a little bit where they're actually located. But that's all the alternative costumes, let's finish up now with a quick summary.
Loki then is a character that I definitely am a little bit disappointed in. I don't know how much of that is due to the fact that he's one of the, the first real boss characters you unlock in the game and it's really tricky to do at that point in time so you're expecting a lot from him and he feels a little bit underwhelming compared to some of the other characters in the game and if you compare him to the likes of Iceman from the X-Men expansion, Iceman can just freeze the entire screen nearly for infinity and Loki does struggle a bit. So once again he's another character that due to the power creep in the game has fell behind but even before that I did think he was falling behind a little bit as well. But that is uh, the Loki guide so we've only got three of the base characters left it will be Wasp, Rocket and Groot and then Thanos and then we're going to finish up with Infinite Thanos. Hopefully I'll have the same volume of videos done tomorrow and I'll get another three out and then the day after that I'll get Infinite Thanos done. But let me know what you think of Loki in the comments below. Let me know how much you hate me for choosing a thematic build over one that's a min-maxing build. And thanks for tuning in. Stay safe. I'll see you all again soon.